Paige Wenzant post UFC career trajectory has been nothing short of fascinating. Transitioning from UFC to BKFC and then venturing into the world of content creation with her website and OnlyFans page, she's been making waves in various domains. Now, she's set to make her mark in boxing with an upcoming main event in Misfits, the Influencer Fight League co-founded by KSI and Mams Taylor. While some might view her participation in Misfits as a spectacle, given her legitimate credentials in UFC and BKFC, Paige is taking this opportunity seriously. She's committed to dedicating more time to boxing and has signed a multi-fight contract with Misfits. This move indicates a shift in focus for her towards boxing, although she remains open to continuing her involvement with BKFC, with plans for a return in the future. She said this, There was a reason I went into bare-knuckle boxing out of the UFC. It was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to be immersed in boxing. It wasn't just that BKFC excited me. It was being in the boxing world and working on my striking and having fun with just striking, honestly. BKFC was the one who came with the offer first and I was like, F yeah, I don't mind taking the gloves off. For Paige, the transition to boxing feels like a natural progression, considering her background and training in striking. While she initially embraced BKFC for its unique appeal, the opportunity to compete in boxing with gloves on is an exciting new chapter in her combat sports journey. This move aligns with her long-standing interest in boxing and allows her to explore a different aspect of her skill set. Overall, her career continues to evolve, showcasing her versatility and willingness to explore new opportunities within combat sports and beyond. Charles Oliveira's mindset after his recent loss at UFC 300 reflects a mix of readiness to get back into the octagon and strategic planning for his next move. Despite the disappointment of the defeat, Oliveira is eager to return to action as soon as possible. He's already back in the gym and awaiting the UFC's call for his next fight. However, he's not interested in facing opponents ranked lower than him and prefers matchups with fighters ahead in the lightweight division. Although Oliveira expressed interest in a rematch with Justin Gaethje, he understands Gaethje's decision to take time off after his recent loss. Oliveira emphasizes the importance of fighting when one is in good condition, aligning with his own desire to return to action sooner rather than later. He said this, I left Las Vegas asking for another fight right away. I want to fight as early as possible. I had two or three stitches over my eye but that's gone already. I have no injuries whatsoever. I'm ready to fight again as soon as the UFC calls me. Of course, I don't have anything to prove to anyone and everybody knows my history in the UFC, so there's no point accepting fights with the number 8 or 10 in the division. I want to fight people who are ahead of me. That's why we have to wait and think, analyze the next step we'll take. My managers and coaches will analyze that. With the lightweight division brimming with high-profile fights, Oliveira remains open to the idea of moving up to welterweight for the right opportunity. He sees it as a potential avenue for significant financial gain and legacy building, provided it makes sense for all parties involved. Regarding his recent loss to Armin Zarukyan, Oliveira refuses to dwell on the judge's decision and acknowledges that he could have been more aggressive during the fight. He accepts the result and is focused on moving forward, channeling any criticism as motivation to work harder. Dana White, the CEO of the UFC, recently shared his thoughts on John Jones' latest controversy. Jones, widely regarded as one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time, has often been at the center of public scrutiny due to various incidents. In this recent issue, Jones was accused of threatening a drug tester from Drug Free Sport International who visited him. Jones has refuted elements of the story, asserting his innocence. White, speaking in a recent interview with Club Random, 
commented on Jones' recurring troubles. He remarked that Jones always seems to find himself in trouble and that there is always something going on with him. White highlighted a recent incident where NBC News reported that Jones was arrested, which was untrue according to White. The situation involved a drug testing agent claiming that Jones threatened her, but he was never arrested. Dana said this. He literally is always in trouble. Always has something going on, and got into trouble. NBC News put out a story that he was arrested and he was never arrested. It's just like, they don't even try anymore. A drug testing company. All of our fighters are drug tested. So, the testing agents can show up at your house or wherever, and they have to know your whereabouts. Showed up, and she said that he threatened her. Jones' presence tends to attract headlines wherever he goes, and many fans hope that he can address his issues and return to the octagon to defend his UFC heavyweight championship. Despite his controversies, there is a desire among fans to see Jones back in action, provided he can resolve his off-the-field issues. Following the BKFC event Knuckle Mania 4 in Los Angeles, the California State Athletic Commission released a list of injuries and medical suspensions for the fighters involved. Notably, headliner Mike Perry received a 60-day suspension with no contest and no contact unless cleared by a physician due to a laceration on his left cheek. Thiago Alves, despite announcing his retirement, faces a 45-day suspension with similar restrictions, should he reconsider. Todd Duffy, another co-headliner, faces a more prolonged suspension of 180 days with no contest and no contact unless cleared by a physician, due to a potential left shoulder injury. Additionally, Duffy received a 45-day suspension with no contest and 30 days with no contact due to a TKO, requiring neurology clearance for his shoulder, neck. The details of Ben Rothwell's suspension were not provided in the released information. These suspensions underscore the seriousness of injuries sustained during the fights and prioritize the fighters' health and safety before they can return to competition. Daniel Cormier's perspective on Dustin Poirier's recent comeback victory in the UFC suggests that Justin Gaethje remains a significant contender in the lightweight division, despite his recent loss at UFC 300. Gaethje's defeat to Max Holloway marked the first time in six years that he had been stopped by knockout during his UFC career. In the aftermath of UFC 300, Gaethje expressed doubts about his chances of securing a title shot, especially after losing two title challenges, including his recent bout against Charles Oliveira at UFC 274. Meanwhile, Poirier's journey provides a glimmer of hope for Gaethje's future. Despite suffering a head-kick knockout loss to Gaethje, Poirier rebounded with an impressive knockout victory over Benoit Saint-Denis at UFC 299, ultimately earning himself a shot at the UFC lightweight title against Islam Makachev at UFC 302. Cormier draws parallels between Poirier's resurgence and what Gaethje could achieve in his next fight. Cormier believes that Gaethje is just one significant victory away from earning another opportunity to vie for the UFC lightweight title. He emphasizes Gaethje's popularity, importance to the UFC, and his accomplishments in the promotion, including winning the BMF belt against Poirier and securing a notable victory over Rafael Fiziev at UFC 286. Despite being 35 years old, Gaethje is still considered to be in his physical prime. Although the exact timeline for Gaethje's return remains uncertain, Cormier remains optimistic that Gaethje is capable of delivering a standout performance that could catapult him back into contention for another shot at UFC gold. Armin Zarukyan's appearance at UFC 300 on April 13, where he secured a victory against former lightweight champion Charles Oliveira,
took a contentious turn when Zarukyan was observed throwing a punch at a fan during his walkout at T-Mobile Arena. While Zarukyan claimed the fan had been directing abusive gestures at him, the fan subsequently apologized for his behavior and stated he wouldn't pursue legal action against Zarukyan or the UFC. Nevertheless, Zarukyan faced scrutiny from the Nevada State Athletic Commission regarding the incident. During a hearing on Tuesday, the NSAC voted to withhold 20% of Zarukyan's $158,000 purse pending a formal disciplinary hearing next month. This decision reflects the Commission's concern over Zarukyan's actions and their potential impact on public safety and the reputation of the sport. In addition to Zarukyan's case, the NSAC also addressed the controversial UFC debut of Igor Severino, who was accused of biting his opponent Andre Lima during their bout. The Commission recommended a six-month suspension and a fine of $3,314.08 for Severino, but the duration of the suspension was contested by Commissioner Anthony Marnell, leading to further deliberation on the matter in the upcoming hearing next month. Paul Hughes, one of the most sought-after free agents in the MMA world, has signed a multi-year contract with the Professional Fighters League PFL. While his official debut with PFL is yet to come, Hughes will make his first appearance in a high-profile bout at Bellator Dublin on June 22 at 3 Arena in Dublin, Ireland. Hughes, a former Cage Warriors featherweight champion hailing from Belfast, Northern Ireland, boasts an impressive professional record of 11-1. He is currently riding a five-fight win streak, with eight of his victories coming by way of stoppage. Set to co-headline the Bellator Dublin event, Hughes will face off against Bobby King, a lightweight fighter from Hawaii aiming to rebound from a two-fight losing streak. Bellator Dublin will also feature Jason Jackson defending his welterweight title against Ramazan Karamagomedov in the main event. Additionally, a pivotal women's featherweight bout between Sinead Kavanaugh and Arlene Blenko is scheduled to take place on the card. Tatiana Suarez has her sights set on a future showdown with reigning strawweight champion John Wiley. Despite being undefeated and considered a top contender in the UFC, Suarez has yet to earn a title shot due to her extended absence from MMA competition. In the meantime, Zhang Wiley continues to dominate the division, most recently defeating Yan Xiaonan at UFC 300. With Suarez eyeing a potential clash with Wiley, she expresses confidence in her ability to test herself against the champion. She said this, I'm really excited to fight Wiley when given the opportunity, because she's had a couple of dominant performances, and I really want to test myself. I think prior to that matchup, I kind of know how I would do. It showed just a little bit more of her game and things like that. I thought she did well. She was able to capitalize like I knew she would. I knew she would win in the grappling department just because Yan is just not good on the ground. I have nothing against her but she's, I mean she's a phenomenal striker, but she's not good on the ground. So I knew that Wiley would be able to outgrapple her, and Yan not being a wrestler, actually got a couple of takedowns if I can remember. I think, they just engaged and she threw her to the ground or something. Just seeing that just shows me that I think, I could impose my will against her, and my grappling is very, very good. I think I do well just like I've always known. Expressing excitement for the opportunity to face Wiley, Suarez believes she can impose her will and perform well in the fight, confident in her abilities to compete at the highest level of the strawweight division. Khabib Nurmagomedov, despite teasing a possible return to the UFC, has made it clear that he will not be stepping back into the octagon. The retired fighter, who boasts a remarkable undefeated record of 29-0,
last competed on October 24, 2020, when he submitted Justin Gaethje. While Nurmagomedov is now part of Islam Makachev's team, who will be defending the lightweight title against Dustin Poirier at UFC 302, he has expressed nostalgia for the fight preparation process. However, he has firmly stated that he has no intention of returning to fighting. Khabib said this. There was a time when those picks in sports seemed fantastic. Faith, patience, the youngest is fully focused and preparing for battle. Despite being approached by fans and the UFC itself, Nurmagomedov has reiterated his decision to retire from professional fighting. He disclosed that he instructed his manager, Ali Abdelaziz, about a year ago not to entertain any fight offers, affirming that his last fight in October 2020 marked the end of his MMA career. Khabib added and revealed this. I know they contacted my manager for UFC 300, but I told Ali Abdelaziz about a year ago that, it doesn't matter who calls you, but never call me for a fight. I decided on this in October 2020. It was my last fight, and I will never change this. Jose Aldo's highly anticipated return to MMA action at UFC 301 this weekend has his coach, Emerson Falcao, predicting a devastating outcome for his opponent, Jonathan Martinez. After temporarily stepping away from the sport following a setback in his bantamweight campaign against Marab in August 2022, Aldo is poised to make a comeback in his hometown of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. In the co-main event of UFC 301, Aldo will face the formidable ranked bantamweight contender Jonathan Martinez. While Martinez has garnered attention for his victories over notable opponents, including Sed Nurmagomedov and Adrian Yanez, Aldo's coach is confident in his fighter's ability to secure a resounding victory on May 4. During a training session captured in Episode 1 of the UFC 301 Embedded vlog series, Falcao expressed his optimism about Aldo's chances, emphasizing Aldo's motivation and desire for a brawl. He anticipates a brutal victory for Aldo, foreseeing a knockout finish reminiscent of his past triumphs in Rio. Aldo's coach said this, his opponent is going to be Jonathan Martinez. He's a tough opponent. He has a good kick. He's very versatile. So, we tried to build the camp around that. Jose Aldo is very well trained and, more importantly, motivated. He's looking for the knockout, wanting to fight, wanting to brawl. On May 4th, we can only expect a brutal victory, via knockout. Although Aldo is approaching the end of his current UFC contract and has hinted at a potential boxing match in the future, a standout performance and victory may entice him to prolong his tenure in the octagon. Before his recent setback, Aldo had been on a three-fight winning streak and was on the verge of contending for the bantamweight title once again. With UFC 301 set to unfold in Brazil this Saturday, the broadcasting lineup sees a slight change, as Joe Rogan takes the night off due to the event being held internationally. Stepping into Rogan's shoes on color commentary is Paul Felder, who will join play-by-play -play commentator John Anik. They will be accompanied by UFC Hall of Famer Daniel Cormier, who is a regular fixture during pay-per-view broadcasts. Handling backstage interviews from Brazil will be Karen Bryant, serving as the in-house reporter for the event. UFC officials have confirmed these broadcast team assignments ahead of UFC 301. The main event of UFC 301 features flyweight champion Alexander Pontoya defending his title against Steve Ursig. Ursig, who remains undefeated since joining the UFC with three consecutive wins, faces a significant challenge in Pontoya as he vies for the championship for the first time.